Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's beautiful 31st of May, 2024. Coming up to this episode of the Crusty Neck Podcast, episode 286, CSIS and Liberal Failures. Yes, this old CSIS report coming to surface in regards to parents maybe being threats to society as we know it. And, of course, more liberal failures. Yes, well, they don't want to ax the carbon tax because they want to save the planet. Podcast, please stick around. Listener view discretion may be advised because I do swear, smoke cigarettes, and make funny faces and make fun of leaders as we know it. All that and more coming up. Please stick around. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. Yes, sir. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. From Western Canada. This is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. Here's Krusty. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 286 of the Crusty Up Podcast. I'm your host, Krusty Canuck, and this podcast is also brought to you in part and supported by the Veterans for Freedom Network. That's right, Stand 2, Veterans for Freedom. And coming soon, Veterans for Freedom TV, like my individuals such as myself and other veterans and other cool people out there who just want freedom of a thought and expression, will be displayed on Veterans for Freedom TV coming soon. Hello once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Krusty Canuck. Hope you're all having a good Friday. I have actually had the day off. Uh, my boss basically told me don't come in today because the work I was doing consists uh, primarily of moving manure and clay and because of the rain we had yesterday everything was flooded out so i got a day off i just have to come in a day earlier next week needless to say i'll still get paid so hey i can't complain about that ladies and gentlemen you know that's always a good thing and, of course, I have to be paid. and all that good stuff hope everyone's been good the past 48 hours uh it's been an interesting time in the news thus far it's been really interesting Interesting how things are going. Uh, like the title card said, though, CSIS uh, reports and, of course, liberal failures. Now, this report came from CSIS back in February of 2015. I have something from the fine people at True North Center, True North Media, and, of course, the CBC article to justify this buffoonery brought to us by our Canadian Security Intelligence Service in regards to anti-LBGT2Q+, uh, alphabet soup, whatever, you name it. I, I, I don't care. I mean, a long story short, I'll read what uh, CSIS has to say. I'll just queue up the article here for you all, too. Uh, just a reminder, too, ladies and gentlemen, if you like and hear what you see, please click like, subscribe, share this content all over social media platforms. But do not be shy. Let me know how you think. Give me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a likes on Rumble and on the tube as well, too. And just a reminder, if you see this show on Rumble and you feel compelled to send me an SEO offer or to help me boost my subscribership monetization <laughs> carry on not interested in the fly-by-night services that come from certain nations that just want to rip people off and lie to them but uh i'm digressing here anyway i'm just going to share the story here from true north media uh it comes from uh february but it was uh, brought to us today and i'll leave another uh, link in the uh description there's for you uh, this is written by a uh, cosman de Surza. Uh, he's a hell of a journalist for True North. Uh, basically, the article says, CSIS admits to monitoring parental rights activists and compares them to neo-Nazis. Like I said, this comes from February 2024. Now, as far as I know, I think the CBC took this same article and used it <laughs> on their page too. So when the CBC and the mainstream media figures that they can just get away with BS, they're ripping off Canadians that are actually making a difference. So that puts the things in perspective. Anyhow, Canada's top intelligence agency admitted to its closely monitoring, uh, closely monitoring the uh, uh, the activities of activists and groups associated with the parents' rights movement, particularly those opposing racial gender ideology. Recent reports from CBC shed a light on a document from the Integrated Terrorism Assessment Center, responsible for running terrorist activities in Canada. I wonder what they do with those Iranians that apparently have been living in Canada, 700 of them that are representing the uh, uh, Iran uh, 
Republican Guard. Anyway, recent reports from CBC shed a light document of an integrated terrorism assessor, uh, assessment center responsible for preventing terrorist activities in Canada. The report lumped together that the freedom movement with extremist groups like neo Nazis and Canon or Canon, QAnon, sorry, I mispronounced it. Anti 2S LGBTQ plus aisle narratives remain a common theme in violent rhetoric exposed by white nationalists, neo Nazis, the freedom movement, and networks such as Diagonal and QAnon. The report reads. Despite the focus on monitoring such rhetoric, there is no mention in the report by CSIS regarding the violence often faced by those protesting against gender ideology. Instances of physical attacks and intimidation against parents' rights protesters have been documented, including an incident involving a teenage activist, Josh Alexander, in Calgary. Now, we all remember that Josh Alexander stood up in uh, Arn Prior, Ontario, against the school's mandate, a Catholic high school's mandate in regards to uh, genders and men changing in girls' washrooms and change rooms and such. And he was really, really chastised by the Catholic school board in that area. Seems ironic, but anyway. A video circulating on social media at the time showed Alexander being surrounded and insulted by a group of LGBTQ activists, leading to his arrest by Calgary Police Services. According to Alexander, he was told that charges were pressed against his assailants but you never saw them get carted away to jail or arrested in any kind of dramatic fashion. Similarly, the Vancouver Police Department is investigating alleged assaults during a trans visibility rally where Canadian parental rights activist Chris Elson, you know, Billboard Chris, who was more commonly known as Billboard Chris, was violently confronted by a trans activist. Yeah, I remember that. He was punched in the face by just some guy with long hair and, and fingernails. Right? But yeah, that's fine, you know. In response to the CBC, CSIS spokesperson Eric Balsam emphasized the agency's assessment of ongoing violent threat posed by the anti-gender movement. Last year, 24-year-old international student Giovanni Villalaba Alman allegedly stabbed three people in a gender studies class at the University of Waterloo. Villalaba Alman faces multiple charges, including aggravated assault and possession of a weapon for dangerous purpose. Balsam expressed concern that such incidents could inspire further violence against the two alphabet group community and those associated with that some perceive as promoting a gender ideology agenda. Okay, so that story... Uh, is like I say, it's from February, but it speaks truth there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there are people in my life that are homosexual. I don't care. There are people that I have met and I've interviewed on the podcast that are transgendered, and not one of them has pushed any kind of agenda on me personally. So when you get Canada's top uh, intelligence gathering network, i.e. CSIS, which is supposed to be equivalent to the FBI, which is supposed to be as just as genuine as any other kind of intelligence service out there, which was supposed to be part of the five eyes issue that's been going on. You would think they would come up with some better plans or some formations out there. They would come up with some better ideology because when you look at the welfare of children, every parent has the right to be concerned. Okay. Now I've said this before in the show, I don't care how you identify. I don't care how you feel. A boy is a boy, a girl is a girl. Now, if they change their mind somewhere in their lives, when they're mature adults and they can make that assessment and make that decision for themselves on their terms, then by all means, do what you want to do. But I have personally seen literature and I have personally seen books that are given to kids in the name of this inclusion which is basically just a perversion. See, when I was a kid, if you had material like that, it was called pornography. It wasn't called a textbook. It wasn't called a tool or a learning aid. It was plain and simple goddamn pornography. And we've got to be a little more diligent when it comes to that. We just have to let kids be kids, ladies and gentlemen. It's that simple. But when you get a government office like CSIS calling the shots saying, oh my God, you know, you got to keep a watchful eye because it might be terrorism. Parents might be terrorists. We'll be going down to a <laughs> down through a very, very nasty path. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And you're back, ladies and gentlemen, in episode 286 of the Krusty Canuck Podcast. CSIS and the liberal failures. Yes, more buffoonery come from the liberal party as we speak. And of course, CSIS and their so-called fear mongering, you know, towards other Canadians. Uh, I would appreciate if CSIS actually gathered some more intelligence 
on the Chinese interference. Uh, gather more intelligence on why is the Iranian Republican Guard having places here in Canada? I would appreciate more if CSIS would look at things that really, really matter to Canadians and the security of this nation as a whole, rather than certain ideologies being flown around. Now, I've I've talked to some members from Diagalon, and they're not <laughs> they're not bigots, they're not chauvinists, they're not racists, uh, they're just tired veterans and tired of the bullshit that's being rammed down people's throats. And I didn't join Diagalon. I even joined any of just not my thing. Um, I've joined Veterans for Freedom because they're good people. You know, I'm not saying members of Diagonal are good people. It's just, it's just not my thing. Okay. But yeah, I, I can assure you that Diagonal is not full of uh, uh, angry old rednecks that want to cause havoc and cause chaos. They question bullshit as they see it, and rightfully so. And so should you, ladies and gentlemen, especially my American audience, my British audience, my Australian audience, and everybody else who's downloaded my show from Podbean. Uh, once again, thank you for all uh, doing that. Uh, I just realized there today I had some people from Holland downloading, or the Netherlands, correction, downloading my show. So thank you very much from Canada, my friends. Thank you very much for downloading that, too. And I noticed there's a couple of subscribers from Ireland. So thank you very much, too. All right. But get back to my point here. If you have a national service that's looking after the security of its people and gathering intelligence on what can be a threat and what cannot be a threat, I think you guys should do better. Really. Uh, and if it comes to parents standing up for their kids, so be it. If you think that's a threat, then one, you don't have any children, or two, you don't know any children, or three, you don't really give a fuck. You just worry about your paychecks. And that just makes you know better than the liberals calling the shots right now. Which you bring me to my next point here in the show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is episode 286 of the Crusting Up podcast. CSIS. And liberal failures. Now, today or yesterday in Parliament, uh, <laughs> Liberal Health Minister Mark Holland uh, was bantering back and forth with uh, Andrew Scheer of the Conservative Party in regards to cutting the carbon tax uh, for average Canadians because uh, summertime, summertime's coming, weather's better, people want to go places. And based on the math that the conservatives have presented to us, the average family would save anywhere from $600 to $800 this summer if the carbon tax was cut Canada-wide, which means that $600 or $700 or $800 would go to a camping trip or go to taking the kids to an amusement park or doing something, something fun, something to enjoy with your family, and something for the average Canadian too who doesn't have a family to put his in her pocket just to save for a rainy day or to save for other things too. And that would make a, a real difference, you know. That extra 800 bucks would go a long way in some cases, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, Brian Lilly from uh, the Toronto Sun has a good editorial on that too, and I'll play this here for you shortly and what Mark Holland said. And just watch the reaction of Mr. Mark Holland. It's only a three-minute video, but really watch the reaction of this ass clown. And how he talks about the whole saving the planet and the planet's burning and shit. It, it just makes me think, you know, when it comes to pollution, we all take responsibility for pollution. You know, if you get a takeout meal and you sit there with the wrappers and the cartons and the, the packaging, you throw it in the trash, right? We all do that. It's common sense, right? If you're doing an oil change in your truck or your car, you're not going to dump the oil over the road and just leave it there. Okay. You know, you clean up your yard and, you know, you have a windstorm, sometimes garbage gets in the yard, sometimes uh, other sticks, grass, and other, other garbage debris falls in your yard. You throw it out. You, you do it, you know, we, we can't with it. You either burn it or you throw it in the dumpster and the city, the town you, uh, you live in, that your city and tax dollars go to, uh, pick it up and dispose of it for you properly. Now, every time I hear the liberals talk about price on pollution, it's almost they just accuse every Canadian citizen who drives a car as being a polluter. Every Canadian citizen that turns their lights on and turns the heat on is a polluter. Yet these ass clowns travel around the globe extensively all the time. All the time. Right? To hobgobble here, to slap and tickle there, to <laughs> numb and chaw there, numb and chaw here. And, and, and for what? For what? Right? More wheels and deals for the Canadian people or more wheels and deals for uh, liberals and other NGOs associated with the liberal brand? Right? Puts things in perspective, ladies and gentlemen. And another thing, too, they're so desperate for attention. They're so desperate 
to stand by their narrative. They're so desperate to stand by their agenda, trying to justify it, and they don't care how they look in the process. So it shows you how the ideology of this whole, let's panic about the planet, and let's keep, it, keep taking money from you, and we line our pockets, look after our buddies and friends, so we can buy more investments, you know, to, to make more batteries, to buy more plastic, and to run up the energy costs in the name of the planet. We've all seen the schematics. We, we've all heard about what it's going to do to the grid with all these electric vehicles on the road, right? But it, it just, <laughs> it, it's just ridiculous in how some of these politicians still think that, oh, we're going to get more money back. We keep paying it. When you pay more taxes, huh? How do you get money back in your pocket when you pay more taxes? They say the average old burden is paying $2,900 a year in carbon taxes. And I'm supposed to get $1,800 back out of that. How's that more money back? I, I don't know about you. Well, but my basic adding and subtraction tells me, no, that's not going to happen. You know, just saying, like the saying goes, you know, crack don't smoke itself. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And you're back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 286 of the Krusty Canuck podcast. CSIS and liberal failures. I'm your host, Krusty Canuck. If you like and hear what you see, please click like and subscribe, share this podcast, all of your social media platform, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Help us Canucks get our words out there too. And I want to say thank you out there to a Mr. Unsworth for your uh, healthy donation of $30. Thank you very much, Mike. I appreciate that. You don't have to do that, honestly. We've had this discussion before. But I do appreciate your donation nonetheless. Well, thank you very much, Mike. I appreciate that. All right. And uh, if you can, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I'm not going to make you do it. Uh, but please check out the Ask Me app. You'll see it in the description. Uh, $3 gives you uh, a chance to ask me a good solid question. And I will give you a good solid answer. So for three bucks, that way it supports the podcast. And if I make enough through this application, Half of the money that I make will go to the Veterans Association Food Bank in Edmonton, Alberta. The food Bank helps a lot of veterans out with food programs, gets guys on their feet. It's a really, really great charity. I highly suggest you check it out, ladies and gentlemen. They're just good people. So if you want to support this podcast, please consider using the uh, Ask Me app in the description. And uh, you'll help me out a big deal. So as I was saying, episode 286, CSIS and liberal failure. So I'll just skip a video here from Brian Lilly, and he'll give you the side-by-side -side description and the buffoonery that is brought to us by the Liberal Party of Canada and their onslaught of, uh, <laughs> their onslaught of lack of respect for the Canadian taxpayer. Uh, just, <laughs> you'll have a good chuckle for sure, but I'll leave these links in the description for you to follow at your own time, and uh, we'll go from there, ladies and gentlemen. Why does Mark Holland and the Trudeau Liberal government hate Canadians having a vacation? Hi, I'm Brian Lilly, political columnist for the Toronto Sun. There was a weird exchange in the House of Commons this week. Conservative MP Rachel Thomas is up asking a question. Pretty boilerplate. She's trying to get the government to say they don't want to give Canadians a, a tax break. The Conservatives have called for uh, the Liberal government to give Canadians a tax break on gas over the summer, between now and Labor Day. and. Thomas is up asking a pretty standard question about this. After nine years, this NDP Liberal government is not worth the hunger and homelessness that it's causing so many Canadians across this country. Many Canadians just simply look forward to a small summer vacation, a road trip perhaps. It's normally a time where they can go and camp in the mountains or go to a national park or visit loved ones. But this year, many Canadians can't afford this simple delight because this government has made life too expensive. On Monday, this House will have the opportunity to vote on a common sense motion to save Canadians 35 cents per litre on gas. Will the Prime Minister vote with us, the common sense Conservatives, so that Canadians can afford a simple vacation, or will he force them to stay home? Okay, so at this point, the government, you might expect, would have a minister stand up and say, well, we're working on affordability here, and we're doing this for Canadians, and we're standing up for Canadians in this way, but... The opposition is not standing up for Canadians. That's standard political theater stuff. But watch Mark Holland lose his mind with a bizarre rant in response. Good news, kids. 
you can take a summer fun time vacation where you're locked in a car for 10 consecutive days non-stop with no bathroom breaks and the conservatives have a plan for you to have that summertime fun and the cost give up the future of the planet right don't worry kids about climate change don't worry about taking action on the planet enjoy your 10 hours in the car and let the planet burn I don't want to play armchair psychologist or therapist here, but did Mark Holland have some really bad childhood vacation memories in the car with his family? Does he take his kids on horrible road trips now? I don't know, but that is a an utterly bizarre answer, you know, especially from a government that travels as much as Holland jets across the country making announcements as health minister. As my colleague Brian Passfume has pointed out, Trudeau's had to close to 20 flights across Canada and to the United States over the month of May alone. And now he's about to jet off to Europe. Doesn't Holland realize that jet fuel is a lot more uh, you know, more emissions than, than driving your car an hour or two to a provincial or a national park? That's an insane reaction, but it shows just how disconnected the Liberals are from reality right now. Canadians do need a break. They're not going to get one from this government, at least not until Canadians decide and get the chance to vote them out because they've had enough. Let me know what you think. Drop a comment down below. Share this on social media. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Well, you heard him talk about the planet burning. Oh, my God. How dare you want to go on a holiday when the planet's burning? Oh my God, how dare you want to save some money when our party basically cut out certain elements of the carbon tax for parts of Atlantic Canada? How dare you? Oh my goodness. <laughs> you just saw the turnaround there and how people were applauding him. Honestly, like what's there to applaud? Right? What's the wrong narrative? I'd like to remind everybody, too, that every one of those members of Parliament got a pretty hefty raise this year, too. The tune of $8,500 extra a month, depending on your position on the bench. Right? If you're a back bench, you're $8,500. I know there's $10,000 if you're a ministerial shadowman, not to mention the prime minister and the speaker of the house. Yet. Right? So what's that tell you? Right? So they can sit and promote this narrative over and over again. Right? How is more money going to change the weather? How is more of my money, your money, everybody else's money going to change the weather? Right? Of course, we're probably going to buy some more investments. You know, five million bucks for maybe a thousand jobs, or five billion dollars for uh, five thousand jobs. Right? But it's not going to stop the sun from shining. It's not going to stop the rain from coming down, and it's definitely not going to stop winter come November. So. The more and more these guys promote this proletariat bullshit, the more and more canes are catching on and getting tired of their crap. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And you're back, ladies and gentlemen, with episode 186 of the Krusty Canuck podcast, Thesis and Liberal Failures. Now, I've engaged some people on the X slash Twitter, formerly known as Twitter. And there's still some Canadians out there that think, oh, you just don't understand how things work. Another misinformed or disinformed individual talking about the carbon tax and how it's not saving us, and really it is. Well, I'd like to know how many taxes is going to save us. I would like anybody out there in internet podcast land to send me an, in, an email or a comment to prove to me how this tax is going to save people in this country, honestly. Okay. Now, if you can find me a viable solution, find me a, a, an answer, okay, on how this tax is going to save you and me without worrying about the national debt that we're in, without worrying about lining the pockets of certain NGO offices like Anti Hate and the EGAL uh, unit there. Tell me how this is not going to benefit some lobbyists. I mean, it's not going to benefit some friend of the prime minister and other friends of the party. And we can have a lengthy discussion on it. If you cannot prove to me how these taxes right, are, are helping people, then you're wasting my effing time. 
okay? And sit back and ask yourself these following questions. Why do I believe in this party? What has it really done for the benefit of Canada? What has it done for my community? What are these leaders doing for anybody in this country other than sitting there smiling on television and blaming Harper or blaming other conservatives? And the reality is, is that they're in charge and they're in cahoots with the NDP because the NDP wants to hold on to their jobs. Jag Meet Singh loves the idea of getting a pension after six years of service. If it were up to me, you would have to serve in Parliament a minimum of 10 to even be considered for any kind of pension. Okay? That's just me, though. Right? I had to do 20 years in the Army. I had to get injured on the job to make the money I do now via my pension. And yes, it does come from tax dollars. Earned because I work for it. Now, when you look at these individuals in Ottawa, it doesn't necessarily matter if they're liberals or NDP or Lay Block or Green, Elizabeth May and her cocktail surprise, blah, and the conservatives alike. Or you know, it doesn't matter. What differences have they made to earn Fed pension after six years of service? Hmm? We know Paulie Evig had a nice pension. We decided to leave politics tomorrow. Well. We know Justin Schroeder had a hell of a nice pension. We really left politics tomorrow. Well. Christopher Freeland, half a liberal cabinet. Woke and non woke alike. And then who gets stuck with the bill? And you. Me and you, ladies and gentlemen. Same thing with my American listeners there, too. All these senators sit around and say they do wonderful things, and especially the senators that have done more than 15 years of service. You know, ask yourself, was that bridge sorted out in my county? Has that road been sorted out in my county? Has the school received new roof yet? And to my Canadian listeners, too, same thing. Whether you vote for provincial or federal alike. So we got to start realizing that maybe we should put some term limits on these guys. And these gals, too. Maybe we should put some term limits and really, really put them on the spot when it's necessary. And I would say it's necessary more than ever now because of the way things are going. Okay? Which brings me to the whole Doug Ford thing, what he said about uh, people smartening up. Now, I'm going to say this. It's because a premier or a municipal mayor or a reeve or a, a, a minister of the legislation or a minister of provincial parliament says something to newcomers to smarten up. That's not racist, ladies and gentlemen. That's common sense. And I'm not talking about the conservative common sense. I'm talking about natural common sense. Here. Remember I made a big stink about Doug Ford saying that uh, about newcomers to Canada. Nothing racial about it. Because he never pinpointed any certain culture. He never pinpointed a certain country. He just pinpointed individuals to come to Canada and cause some shit. Because it's been known that some of the protesters at UFP and some at McGill in Montreal are not even goddamn students. Right? So it's something to think about. It's not racist to tell people to smarten up. It doesn't matter where you're from. Right? It doesn't matter where you're from at all. It's just start to be an adult and take responsibility and owning your shit and taking control of your life. And stop blaming other people for your problems. This is part of being an adult, ladies and gentlemen. Anyhow, I have been Krusty Knack on this beautiful. 31st of May, 2024. I wish good things to you all out there. Do it in these trying times. Look after your little friends and loved ones, neighbors, all that good stuff. Do your best to be kind to people. I know I can sound kind of winded. You know, I get a little too angry at times. But it doesn't hurt to be kind to somebody. It doesn't hurt to be kind. I mean, just give someone a hand. Give me an ear or two. Shoulder to cry on. But things are getting tough for everybody out there. And uh, we just got to persevere, ladies and gentlemen. Stand our ground, stand firmly, stand high. All that good stuff. I will be around this Sunday for another episode, too. So check out that and if you uh, like. Uh, like I say again, please consider donating. Use the Ask Me application. Link will be in the description. Please to follow, too. Thank you again, Michael, for that lovely donation. Thank you once again, my friend. Appreciate that. But you don't have to do it because I know your situation. But I do appreciate it uh, all this time. And uh, like I say, guys, I'll see you Sunday for another episode. Like I always say, Mandy Merritt wins the day. Take care, and I'll see you Sunday night. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. Oh, yes, sir. 
There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck podcast. I'll smack my ass and call me Judy. <laughs>